Some of you think you don't change. Okay. All right, it is what it is. But Jesus the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. chapter of the book of Acts and uh, second chapter of the book of Acts uh, Senator McClellan we're so happy that you stopped by stopped by and uh, and I, I'm glad that you because people who young people uh, if you're under 18 youth church is open um, so not a na na not a na na hey 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 Goodbye. Amen. Because people need to know about you in order to connect with you. And, uh, and there are two um, really important things that you shared that opened up the door to the rest of what you shared. First of all, you shared that, um, that you are a PK. And so you're a preacher's kid. So you know about church. With no R, we talked about that. Amen. And uh, and second, um, um, it's important for people to know um, that uh, you fight for the African American community as an African American woman. Amen. It's not, and and hear me out. It's not every, everybody who fights for the African American community is not African American. All right. L let's get that straight. But it was important for you to know who she is in speaking to you because she has shared some experiences that you and I have shared. Amen? It's important for people to know that. So thank you for coming by. You all, she has a call 
uh, a radio interview at somewhere around 12, 12.30. So if you see her slip out, she's going out to do that radio interview, but she's not leaving. You, and you know how we do at Ebenezer. We, we don't believe in politicians coming just to speak to us for a second and then slip out the door. Amen. She, they're going to stay for church. Amen. The second chapter of the book of Acts, uh, if you will stand with me, I'll be reading from the international, New International Version. We're reading verses 14 through 21. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for bringing your people back. And we pray that your people came back with a new spirit, a new something, and then bring the old something back. No need to put a new wine in old wineskins. Amen. Amen. Acts chapter 2, verses 14 through 21. Uh, and it reads, Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Now here's what he's explaining. He's explaining uh, what happened on the day of Pentecost. Uh, the 120 disciples are in the house and the Holy Spirit uh, uh, fills them and they speak in unknown and speak in other languages. My fault, they speak in other languages and we talked about it in talking about Pentecost last week. The amazing thing was that there was one language spoken inside the room that was Galilean Aramaic. But you hear you, there were people outside the, the house who were from different countries and they heard their own languages spoken from these people who spoke Galilean Aramaic within this room. And they uh, said, it's amazing. We hear our own languages coming out of this room. And of course, there's always one white, one wise guy in the crowd. One wise guy. And he said, they must be drunk. And so Peter stands up to explain what they have just witnessed. Amen? All right. So let's go. Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No. This that you've just witnessed is what, is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. Then Peter is going to go into the prophecy. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will do what, church? They will prophesy. Your young men will see what, church? Your old men will do what, church? Dream dreams, even on my servants, both men and who? Both men and women. And I said it at eight and I'll say it again. So if somebody tells you that women are, cannot be prophets, they didn't read the word, did they? Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will do what? They will prophesy. I will show wonders in heaven above and, and, and signs on earth below. Blood fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned into darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. This is all as a result of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit falling down on that day. And then Peter says, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Somebody ought to give God glory for that. That's how you and I got saved. Holy Spirit fell and there was work done in spreading the gospel and for just a few minutes I, I want to preach and teach on the topic or from the topic uh, Holy Ghost matters Holy Ghost matters let's pray most holy and all wise God we thank you for one more opportunity to break the bread of life Thank you for one more opportunity to preach the gospel. And Lord, I will preach it like it's my last time, God, because it just may be. And Lord, I pray that you will hide me behind the cross so that your people will see all of you and none of me. I pray, God, 
that I would disappear so that you might appear, God. And Lord, we pray that your spirit will continue to saturate this place because we know that the spirit of God, in, the, in your spirit there is teaching and there is learning. And in your spirit, chains and yokes are broken, God. So Lord, we pray that your spirit will break every chain today, every fetter that has people bound. God, every, everything that binds us, God, and you said uh, in your word, if you bind it on earth, you'll bind it in heaven, and if we loose it on earth, then you'll loose it in heaven, and so we bind every spirit now that blocks the word, and we loose understanding and wisdom and discernment and the freedom of worship, God, and finally, we pray that as a result of the word that has come forth in song, will come forth by preaching that somebody will draw closer to you and maybe, just maybe somebody will come asking you, what must I do to be saved? This is our prayer and we pray it in Jesus' name and all God's people said Amen. Amen. You may take your seat. Holy Ghost matters. Holy Spirit matters. For many years in church, we've been taught what matters in Christendom and what matters in the church. Some of the information about what matters was good information. And some of the information was more ritual than relationship. Can I get an amen? Of course, we were taught that God matters, weren't we? That's good information. We were taught that Jesus matters. That's good information, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, we were also taught that the communion table matters. Mm -hmm. I'm getting ready to turn, turn, turn your apple cart up, upside down. Uh, how many of you, when you were young, came to the front of the church, uh, whether during youth choir rehearsal, choir rehearsal, you were running, and you know how clumsy you were. You tripped over, you hit the communion table, and your mother looked at you like you had killed somebody. And y'all see my mother. My mama's light-skinned, and so her nose was shining, and I don't know how she created that that fast. One time I was running in church, and, and it, was, it wasn't my fault. Cornell was chasing me. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? And, and I bumped into the communion table, and I, and I bounced off the communion table and bumped into my mother. I think in church her head turned all the way around, and she looked at me. Caught a beat down when I get home, got home for bumping into to the communion table. We're taught what matters in church. Uh, let, let me tell you this: this table. Let me let me tell you as Christians, this table is a piece of piece of furniture. I want to let you know that we respect the house of God, but don't tell anybody that this table is holy. We respect the pulpit and the area. Don't tell anybody it's holy. It's not. It's a platform. And it's, it's, it's a deus from which we speak. It's the word that is holy. It is the spirit of God which is in us that is holy. And here's the thing. If I ain't preaching the gospel, we're too sent. And if I ain't preaching the word, it doesn't make any difference whether I'm up here or down here. It's still a horrible word. But if it's a word from the Lord, if it is what thus says the Lord, then this becomes the pulpit. So we were taught what mattered when we were in church. Again, we respect uh, the furniture in the house of God, and we respect the house of God, but don't tell anybody it's holy. This furniture is holy. It's not. Check, check behind me and check your Bible. That wasn't good information. We were taught what matters and what didn't matter. Somebody's going to check their Bible after this and go, what? <laughs> go ahead and check it, okay? You got to know the truth so the truth can make you free. Because when you start idolizing things and assigning holiness to things, 
then that's where the problem comes in. Am I right about it? We were taught what matters and what didn't matter. Salvation matters, doesn't it? Repentance matters, doesn't it? Prayer matters. Holiness matters. Relationship matters. The blood of Jesus matters. Uh, but how many of you who were not raised in a Pentecostal church were taught that the Holy Ghost matters? Hmm. It's a difference in what we were taught. No blame, no, no, no assigning any, no pointing fingers, no assigning any blame. But many of us were not taught that the Holy Spirit mattered. Well, Pastor, how do you know? Well, watch this. If you were asked to introduce God to somebody, you could introduce God to somebody, couldn't you? If you were introducing God to me, who would you say God is? The creator. Okay. Elohim, almighty. Who else? Uh, you went to the other one. Hold that, put a pen in that though, because we're coming back to you. Who else would you say God is? He's almighty. He's your help. He's the great I am. Elohim, he is the beginning and the end. He's alpha and omega, the first and the last. Jehovah Jireh, he's your provider. He's Jehovah Nisi, he's your banner. He's Jehovah Rapha, he's your healer. He is Jehovah Shama, he is your peace. You would have no trouble introducing God to your friend. Am I right about it? Think about this. Now, we're talking about what matters. How about introducing Jesus to your friend? Now, I told 8 o'clock, all you got to do is go to a sermon close and think about how preachers close the sermon and you could introduce Jesus to your friends. He is the... Okay, we're gonna get, we're gonna do a take two so that uh, so she can do that again. And all right, and and action. If you, hold up, you gotta wait quiet on the set. We're gonna do a take two and action. If you were to introduce Jesus to your friends, who would you say that Jesus is? He is the he. Oh, he's a mighty counselor. He's a prince of peace. Yes. Who else? He's a comforter. Somebody said Jesus was the comforter. Hold, put a pin in that. You moved ahead. Hold up. All right. Who else? King of kings. Lord of lords. Your friend. The sa Ooh, savior. Ooh. Savior. Yes. Hey. He, healer, okay, we can go, we can do that through the spirit of, of the Lord that works in Jesus because he healed us from sin, yes. We'd be able to introduce Jesus, wouldn't we? And if you think about the sermon closes that you've heard, when you think about Jesus, and when the pastor starts hooping, he goes, starts going, Jesus, mm, Mary's, mm, Jesus, the man from Jesus, he's the lily in the won't Jesus, he's the bright and he is the king of he is the lord of and he came down 40 and two generations and they whipped him all mm -hmm. and they hung him on an old rugged uh -huh. they hung him and they stretched him he hung his for me he but that's not how the story because three days later he rose again and he rose with all power in his hand you'd be able to introduce Jesus to your friends wouldn't you just like you'd be able to introduce God to your friends but watch this introduce the Holy Spirit to your friends teacher Comforter. Mm, we got two teacher comforter. Well, somebody tried to get out of it, talking about my man. <laughs> you can't get no general answer like that. <laughs> oh, you're one of the smart out of kids. One plus one. Something greater than one. And you that should be right. <laughs> uh, a 
other things that you'd be able to say about Holy Spirit. He has power. Third person of the Trinity. Your guide. Yes. We got five things so far. How is it we came up with 10, 15 things for God and, and 100 things for Jesus? But five things. Intercessor. Stop Googling back there. <laughs> Intercessor. Uh, uh, and, and if many of us would, would, would admit it, we don't know as much about the Holy Spirit as we know about God and Jesus. Because there is a lot to know. And, and the thing about it is, Holy Spirit matters. So let's go to the text and then we'll come back. So we said uh, it's Pentecost in Acts 2 and, and in Pentecost uh, God told the, the disciples 10 days earlier to wait in the room, in the house and the Holy Spirit would fall down on them and said wait on the promise of the Father that you heard of from me. And so the Holy Spirit, sure enough 10 days after Jesus ascended to heaven, 50 days after he was resurrected, uh, the Holy Ghost came down and it came down like a mighty Russian wind and people, the Galileans spoke other languages and people said they were drunk and then Peter preaches, he had preaches a sermon outside and he tells them that as a result of the Holy Ghost being poured out and pouring, poured into believers, that your sons and daughters will prophesy. I'm in verse 18. That your young men will see visions, that your old men will dream dreams. And then verse 18, both men and women will do what, church? Will prophesy. And that's all as a result of Holy Spirit. Jesus didn't say because of God. He said, because of the Spirit of God, Holy Spirit matters. And then as a result of the presence of Holy Spirit, his presence on earth, verse 19, God will show wonders in heavens above and signs on earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned into darkness, the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And because of the Holy Spirit working here on earth, verse 21, everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If Peter meant because of God on earth, everybody who calls upon the name of, uh, uh, of, uh, of Jesus uh, shall be saved, he would have said it. That's because, this happens because of the spirit of God that's on earth. And the spirit from God that's on earth. Holy Spirit matters. And because of that, we can conclude that there is something important about Holy Spirit. And so what I want to do, this is informational. This is for your ministry. And why do you preach this, Pastor? Because here's the thing. We, it, it's time for us to minister now like never before. It'd be one thing if it was just unchurched people who are not coming to church. But you have church to people who have now become complacent. Am I right about You got some pastors who have become complacent with church being closed. And you have, if you have more faith in man's bacterial spray than you have in the power of the Holy Spirit to cleanse the air that you breathe, then something is going on. Something is wrong. It's time for us to be able to minister to them. And the Holy Spirit power works best and it is strongest when we are ministering. It does not work in its strongest form and in its best form when we just ask for miracles and we're only concerned about our own problem. Because we keep going around in those same problems, don't we? You know who you are. Dear Lord, I ain't going to do this no more. Oops, I did it again. I ain't going to do it no more. It's in your power to save me. It works best when we are ministering, when we are about our Father's business. And so we have to teach that Holy Spirit matters as we minister. Are you with me? 
So let's look at three aspects of Holy Spirit. Number one, let's look at the names of uh, Holy Spirit or uh, the names of Holy Ghost. Um, and uh, Holy Spirit has many, many names. And, and you know how we do in our communities. We got a lot of names. We got nicknames, don't we? We have different monikers, M-O-N-I-K-E-R-S. You know, you may be known as uh, as Tom, or or you may be known as Tyrone at church, but in other circles, you know as Little Man. You may be known as Latoya uh, in church, but in other circles, you may be known as Little Mama, as Bam Bam, Man Man, CC, BB, DD, Fifi. Gigi, Chi Chi, Nini, Mimi, Titi, you know how we do. We are known by various names, aren't we? And so Holy Spirit has various names or monikers. Um, we know that he is Holy Spirit. He's also Holy Ghost. He's also called the Spirit of God. Uh, the, the Greek word translated as helper in reference to the spirit is parakletos. So we know he's a parakletos. And somebody said an advocate. And here's where we come into the Holy Spirit being an advocate. The formal or technical form of parakletos is a legal concept. The spirit is one of our advocates or parakleton. An advocate is someone who pleads a case before a righteous judge. Are you with me? So when you talk about introducing the Holy Spirit, he is your advocate. And how many of you are like me? You, you have trouble pleading your own case adequately. It's hard to plead your own case when you know you're guilty. Can I get an amen? Uh, and let me talk about me. Hard for me to plead my case before God when I know I'm dead wrong. When I know I promised God that I wouldn't do it again, and then I did it again. Hard for me to plead my case before God when I know I've lied to myself. I know I've lied to God. I know that I had the best intentions when I did it. When I said I wasn't going to do it anymore, I was downright sure and certain and I was positive that I was never going to do it no more. And when I did it again, I was so ashamed that I couldn't even plead my own case before God. And so when you talk about the names and the purposes of the Holy Spirit, he's an advocate. He pleads that case to God for us. Here are some other names or monikers of the Holy Ghost so that you know. 2 Corinthians 3.3, 3, he is called the spirit of the living God. Isaiah 6 1, he's called the Spirit of the Sovereign Lord. Romans 8 2, he's called the Spirit of Life. Matthew 10 20, he's called the Spirit of Your Father. Ain't that, that is good, the Spirit of Your Father. Hebrews 10, 29, he's called the spirit of grace. John 14, 17, he's called the spirit of truth. In uh, Romans 1, 4, he's called the spirit of holiness. In Ephesians 1, 4, he is called the spirit, John 14, 17, the spirit of truth. Romans 1, 4, the spirit of holiness. Ephesians 1, 17, the spirit of revelation. And in those times, guess what? When I can't remember all that, even though the Holy Ghost brings the word of God to my remembrance sometimes I can't remember all that and sometimes I can't get fancy with my theology and in those days and times he answers when I go help I need you now he still answers and responds the names of the Holy Ghost he goes by different names and different monikers and I'm telling you this because you are called to ministry. You are called to minister to people. And in your ministry and in your ministering, Holy Ghost matters. Are you with me? So let's look at the person. Now that we've talked about the names of the Holy Ghost, 
Let's look at the person of the Holy Ghost. And there's still other names of the Holy Ghost that I didn't put in here. We'll talk about them during Bible study. The person of the Holy Ghost. Um, it's important to understand, and I think I've said this, I said this a couple of weeks ago, that Holy Spirit is not an it, but it's a person. He's a person. He's a person. Well, why would anybody ever call Holy Spirit an it? Well, the word that's translated spirit is a neuter word in Greek, meaning it is neither male nor female. And so sometimes if something is not male or female, then you don't call it a he or a she, you call it an, you call it an it. And so that's how sometimes the Holy Spirit is referred to as an it, because uh, in the, that, that Greek word spirit is neither male nor female. But here's the thing, in John chapter 15, verse 26, when Jesus introduced the Holy Spirit to the disciples, he said, when the counselor comes, somebody back here said he was a counselor. The one I send to you from the Father, the spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father. Then Jesus uses the pronoun, the third person singular pronoun, he. He will testify about me. The Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit is not an it. He is a he. Are you with me? And Jim Standridge, Dr. Jim Standridge said this. He said, the spirit of God or the Holy Spirit is God himself present in the world of man working out God's purposes. The Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost is God himself present in the world of man in spirit form working out his own purposes. Well, pastor, uh, how can you say that God is not here? Uh, God is in heaven. When Jesus taught us how to pray, I know I'm challenging some of your theology to God be the glory. Because when Jesus taught us how to pray, Jesus said, you don't, you don't know how to pray as you ought. He said, well, so when you pray, pray after this manner. Our Father, who art in heaven. God is in heaven. His spirit is here on earth working things out with us as we minister. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. uh, or the other person of the Trinity, the, the, the person of the Holy Spirit, is the, the person is the third person of the Trinity. Now, here's the thing, and there are lots of people who say, I don't understand how one God can be three people. But think about this. Um, if God can take the waters of the Jordan River and wall them up so that the Israelites can go through, he can be three persons, can he? Not only that, if God can send the Holy Spirit, that wind, the pneuma, through the midst of the waters that is walled up, the water that is walled up, and and dry that that the, the bed, the, uh, the river bed, uh, the the seabed, and the Israelites, 2.5 million people can walk through on dry land. If he can, if he's miraculous enough to do that, I think he's a miraculous enough to be one God and three persons. Are you with me? If God is miraculous enough to take the Jordan River as it's flowing downhill during the flood season, and those waters are really flowing, and because he wants the children of Israel to be able to cross over into the promised land, if God can take the Jordan River and not just stop it, but make it run backwards during flood season, I think he's miraculous enough to be one God in three persons. Can I get an amen? So the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Godhead or the Trinity. Uh, what else about the person of the Holy Spirit? He was present from the beginning. Stay awake. Tell your neighbor, stay awake. Just because I ain't promised you something, don't go to sleep. Amen. This is where the real rubber meets the road with the word. 
Uh, Genesis 1 verse 2, he was here from the beginning. Now the earth was formless and empty and darkness was over the face of the deep and the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Why do you tell us that? Because I don't want you to think that the first time the Holy Spirit shows up was at Pentecost. Shows up a lot, a lot more times than that. The Holy Spirit was the, um, was the force behind Mary becoming pregnant. She was pregnant with the baby of the Holy Spirit. I know it was God's baby, but you'll see where the Holy Spirit caused that to happen. So it was here before, he was here before Pentecost. And then you think that, that when Jesus went out for 40 days to be tempted, the spirit ministered to him and angels in the spirit ministered to him when he came out of fasting. It, it, uh, the Holy Spirit was here prior to Pentecost. And there, there are several cases in which the Holy Spirit lifted Ezekiel up to different heights and lifted him up to different places and visions. The Holy Spirit was here. Uh, the person of the Holy Spirit in many paintings and church logos, he's often symbolized as what kind of bird? A dove. Um, and uh, uh, we also know that the Holy Spirit is uh, uh, manifested as a mighty rushing what? A mighty rushing wind. Now here's the thing about this wind that is the Holy Spirit. The world can't see it. The world cannot see this wind. They can only see the effects of the wind on you. Pastor, that, that doesn't make sense. Can you, can you break that down some? Okay, all right. How about, how about this? Uh, how many of you know that... Um, that some people don't want to see you happy in Jesus. <clears throat> mm -hmm. They don't want to see you happy in Jesus. They liked you fine when you were happy in the world. They, they liked you just fine when you were happy in the club with them. Am I right about it? They, they liked you just fine when you were happy in the gossip sessions at work around the water cooler talking about how unfair the boss is when you know you stole that paper and you know you came to work late all out of breath talking about traffic was bad and this is your fifth time and traffic is always bad. Why don't you leave a little earlier? But you can stand around the water cooler and talk about how rotten the boss is. She's so rotten and she's so nasty. They were fine when you did that. People, Some people were fine when you were at... at, at, at happy at the bar and, and with your drink and your two-step. Can I get an amen? They were just fine when you were a complainer and a dissenter and a backbiter. And the deed that you decided to make Jesus your choice, you became something different. You think you better than us. That's because what they see, they see you moving forward, but they can't see you. The wind is pushing you forward. Oh, oh, you a holy roller now, right? Okay, mm-hmm. Don't talk that Jesus stuff to me because one week ago, I know where you were. It's okay, but I came back and I got back in line with Jesus. So what happens is they can see the effects of what you are, what's happening to you, but they cannot see the, the wind that is pushing you forward. Are you with me? And look, because the Holy Spirit is designed for your ministry, the wind that is the Holy Spirit lifts you up and it lifts your ministry up when you begin to take care of God's business and you put your business on the back burner, then God will put your business on the front burner. And guess what he will do? That same wind that pushed you forward will open doors that no man can close. That same wind that pushes you forward will close doors that nobody can open. That same wind that God has caused to push you forward will lift you up when people try to hold you down. It will push you forward. And when people think you're in a storm, what it is is that God is just moving you forward at a faster pace. The world cannot see that, though. All they see is you changing. You different. You are at 
acting funny. I know I said acting. You are acting funny. They cannot see the wind, the pneuma, P N E U M A, that pushes you forward. They cannot see the Holy Spirit. All they see is you doing this. Moving forward. All the world sees is you moving on. Changing positions. The Holy Spirit, one of its manifestations, is as a mighty rushing wind. And the world can't see it. Mm -hmm. So you can say, this joy I have, the world didn't give it to me. This peace I have, the world didn't give it to me. This love I have, the world didn't give it to me. And if the world didn't give it, the world can't take it away. Why do you use that as, a, as an example? Here you go. This peace, joy, and love, not only did the world not give it, the world doesn't understand it. They don't understand when they give you hell and you give them heaven. They don't understand when they give you their worst, but you still give them your best. They don't understand when they stab you in the back and you can smile in their face and be genuine with it because you know that wind has moved you forward and no weapon formed against you shall prosper. That wind has moved you out of the way of that weapon. The world can see the effects, but they don't understand it. Are you with me? And last, and we're going to close with this. Holy Spirit matters. We looked at the names of Holy Spirit. We looked at the person of Holy Spirit. Let's look at the power of Holy Spirit. And again, this is for your ministry. This is for what you are called to do in the vineyard. This is for your ministry. The power of the Holy Ghost. Another representation of the Holy Ghost is breath. And this is not just any breath, church. This is the life-giving breath or ruark. In John 20, 22, Jesus breathed on his disciples after his resurrection and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Are you with me? Life-giving breath. We were dead in sins and trespasses. But the Holy Spirit came and blew life-giving breath into us. Are you with me? How many of you know you were sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore? Uh, very deeply stained within, seeking to rise no more. And here's the thing. The songwriter says, but the master of the seas heard your despairing cry. From the waters he lifted you. Now, all he did when he lifted you up was... He blew life-giving breath into you. How many of you did like me? You came to church many years and you were dead as a doornail. Coming to where life is. Mm-hmm. And if you weren't, and if you don't acknowledge it, cool. But it is what it is. Until the day that the Holy Spirit blew life-giving breath into you. Are you with me? And so we want to look at one example of this life-giving breath and we're done. In the Old Testament, do you remember Ezekiel in the valley of the dry bones? And that begins in Ezekiel 36, around chapter 36. Uh, the spirit of the Lord, that, 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 uh, that Ruark transported him to a valley. And then the, there were dry bones in that valley. And these bones represented the house of Israel as a whole. And the real question was, 
whether or not, to, uh, not where the real question wasn't whether the dry bones could live. The real question was whether there was hope for Israel because Israel was dead in sins and trespasses. Israel had denied God. Israel had turned their back on God. And you think about what's going on in the world today. There are more people who follow people on TikTok than people who follow Jesus Christ. Can I get an amen? There are more people who spend more time on social media than they spend reading their Bible. The question is, can these dry bones live? In this valley of dry bones that, 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 that the Spirit took Ezekiel to, he asked, can these dry bones live? And Ezekiel said, Lord, only you know. Dry bones. As the vision goes, uh, God tells Ezekiel to prophesy and that he will make the Ruark enter these bones so that they will come to life. And the question is, can dry bones live? Can dead spirits be brought back to life by the Ruark, that is the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost or the Spirit of God or the Spirit of your Father or the, or the Spirit of Truth. Can they come back to life? We're here in the valley. What Ezekiel does, he begins to prophesy as he is instructed. And as he prophesies, you see a toe bone start to move. And the toe bone begins to find an ankle bone. And after the toe bone finds the, uh, the, 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 uh, the toe bone finds the foot bone, I'm sorry. And then, then the foot bone, you see a foot bone now begin to move. And that foot bone finds the ankle bone. Can these dry bones live? Can the Ruark of God bring life where there is no life? Um, and what happens is then you've got an ankle bone. You've got a foot bone, a heel bone, and an ankle bone together. And then that ankle bone starts to find that leg bone. Can these dry bones live? Come on, y'all know where I'm going. And then that leg bone, as it starts to live, tries to find the knee bone. Can the dry bones live? Can, when everything is dead in your life, when everything has fallen apart, when you don't have any hope, when you don't have a ministry, when you don't have family, when you don't have supporters, when you don't have any hope, can the dry bones live? And Isaiah Ezekiel prophesied, and, and sooner or later, the, uh, the leg bone found the knee bone. And then the knee bone found the thigh bone. And then the thigh bone found the hip bone. And I think when I find the hip bone, I think I can start to get my shout on. Can I get an amen? And then the hip bone found the backbone. And when I find the backbone, I can stand. What do you do when you've done all you can? Seems like you can't make it through. You just stand when there's nothing left to do. You just stand and you watch the Lord see you through. So now my hip bone has found my backbone. And then the backbone in the valley begins, it finds the shoulder bones. Now I can bear some weight without collapsing. Now I can bear some problems without wanting to kill myself. Now I can bear some troubles without singing, woe is me, because my back is straight. My shoulders are back and I can bear some weight. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for the weight that you put on my shoulders. For I reckon that the present, the troubles of this present time are not compared to the glory that will be revealed. Why? Because I can bear this weight right now. Because I know that greater, I said greater, I said greater is coming by and by. When the morning comes, now my shoulder bones have been connected. Now my shoulder bones find my neck bone. Come on now, and then my neck bone 
finds the head bone. And remember when, the, when Isaiah, Ezekiel prophesied, these bones were dead. They were spread apart. They were all over the place. But now the bones are all together through the power of the Holy Spirit, through the power of the Holy Ghost, through the power of the Spirit of God. Does Holy Ghost matter? Yes, Holy Ghost matters. And watch this. Not only did the bones connect, they received flesh from the Lord. Can things that are dead and all over the place live in the power of the Holy Ghost? Things can come back together again. Can I get an amen? And then once the flesh was on these bones, then the Holy Spirit blew the Ruark into the lungs that was over the flesh that was on the bones. And there was a life, there was a life back again. How many of you been dead and you can testify to the fact that you were dead, but you were brought back alive. You didn't see how you were gonna make it, but now you can see your way. Didn't understand how you were gonna take it, but now you know that there's a blessing on the other side of through. Once the Ruark blows, life can come back in. dead and come back to life. That's the power of the Ruark. That Holy Spirit breath, that breath from God through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit matters. As a result of this sermon, I need you to be able to introduce God to the people to whom you minister. I need you to be able to introduce Jesus to the people you minister, to whom you minister. But I also need you to be able to introduce the Holy Spirit to the people to whom you minister. Holy Spirit matters. Pastor, I pray to God. Yeah, you pray to God. Cool, we all do. But God flows on earth through the power of Holy Spirit. I pray to Jesus. Cool. But Jesus even said to the disciples, he says, I'm going to send you. I'm leaving, but I'm going to send you another, a counselor. Counselor, the advocate is here with you. Holy Spirit matters. And I'm going to say this and then I'm going to hush. Holy Spirit and its power matters most in your ministry. Why is your ministry so important? Because if I pass Jared on the street or if I have an opportunity to have a conversation with him and, and I know he's not saved and I choose not to at least ask where you go to church, I have decided that it's okay for Jared to go to hell. I have decided he doesn't need heaven. He got it all together. Holy Spirit empowers this witness right here. He'll tell you what to say. He'll tell you what not to say. He will tell you what to do. He will tell you how hard to go in. You ever had somebody try to minister to you and they went in too hard and you were like, get up off me! That's because they weren't listening to the Holy Spirit. 
Holy Spirit will tell you how much pressure to put on. It's important in your ministry. And the command stands today. Go ye, therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the and Holy Spirit matters. Come on, stand with us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your Holy Spirit, the Spirit that empowers us, the Spirit that gives us this power for uh, ministry. And we know that you've used Holy Spirit to solve many of our personal problems, but we know that the greatest miracles that the disciples witnessed, saw, and performed were as they were on the mission field. And so, Lord, we want to be on the mission field and the battlefield for you, Lord. And we know that there are souls out there that need saving. There are people out there who need to hear the word of God. And the only way they're going to hear it is if we tell them about God. But we don't go alone. And we thank you for this spirit that's, that you send with us and in us to empower this mission you have us on. Use us, God. Send us. Here are we. Send us. This is our prayer. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Is there one today who does not know Jesus Christ in the pardon of your sins? If there is one, you can get him now. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says that if thou, thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Hmm. But when with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Is there one today? Savior, uh, repeat this prayer after me, and we'll repeat it with you so you don't feel like you're doing it alone. And if you are here and you don't want to come up, repeat this prayer. Heavenly Father, I am a sinner. I have no good of my own, but I have heard the word about a man named Jesus. I've heard the word that Jesus saves from my sins. And I believe the word. And right now, I give you my heart. I give you my mind. I give you my life. I will never be the same in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer with us, you've changed your residence from earth to heaven, and you've changed your citizenship. You are now no longer a citizen of earth. You are a sojourner. You are passing through on your way to heaven. Please connect with us. The information is at the bottom of the screen. The number is 757-490-9690 and the website is www.ebcvaworship.org. 
The second petition, is there one who does not have a church home who would like to make Ebenezer Baptist Church your church home? Will you come now? We are a loving church. We preach the word. We don't preach prosperity gospel because we know that there is already prosperity in the gospel. Can I get an amen? We don't care as much about you getting a new car as we care about you getting new life. Don't care as much about your riches on this side as we do about the riches that you need to store up and the timber that you need to store up in heaven. Amen? Because all this stuff will go away and decay and rust and it'll go away and you can't take it with you behind your body, behind your hearse. And if you do, you are a fool like the rest of the people. Here's the thing. When you go, it stays. But if you have, if you have sent up your timber now, if you have stored up riches in heaven, then there is a house, there's a mansion, there's a dwelling for you up there. Is there one? one? One more chorus. I surrender all. sown your seeds. The offering baskets are at the door um, to the left of the ushers, my right there left. And um, the other thing is that we're going to pray uh, the benediction. Um, and it's so good to see all of you back. Many of you back. Those of you who died, it is so good to see your faces again. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. I'm trying to look at all those who, this is your first Sunday back. I'm trying to look you in the eye so that you know I'm looking you in the eye. Amen. And for those of you who, this is not your first Sunday back, thank you for continuing to come. You all, I don't preach this message for nothing. The fields, I, this, is, this is my plea. I, the saying, the, the, the fields are white for harvest. People need the word, you all. People are misguided, misled. They need the word. And they get it from us. Come on, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for these seeds that have been sown. We pray that you will bless the gift and the giver. God, we pray that you would multiply it on both ends, God. And now may the love of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with each of us. Henceforth, now, and forever. And all of God's people said amen. Amen and amen. If you will, follow the directions of the ushers so that we may egress safely. Please follow the directions of the ushers so that we can leave safely. Thank you.